Sandvik Coleman is a world leader in the production of cutting tools and we are here in Sandvik in Sweden at their HQ. Magnus, the Coleman Mill 390, it's been around for quite some time, but you've recently invented an additive manufactured version. What was the thinking behind this? Yeah, the thinking behind the lightweight Coromel 390 is, is really to be able to, to sort of reduce the weight of the cutter and also to reduce the length um, to, be, uh, to be able to improve the productivity at the customer using uh, long overhang tools where they really need the reachability. So in terms of additive manufacturing, what is the process? Yeah, we are using the, the uh, powder bed uh, fusion laser method to, to create this uh, cutter. And what material is the cutter when it's printed? It's printed out of a titanium alloy powder. So if I pick these two cutters up... Okay, so that is significantly lighter and a fair bit shorter. But how much lighter? Uh, I would say like in between uh, 70 and 80 percent lighter compared to a standard tool. And why does having a lightweight cutter, how does that aid the machining process? Uh, it, it, it will uh, really, really boost the performance when using silent tools adapters. Mm -hmm. um, because it's crucial, the, the weight in the front of the silent tool adapter as well as the length in between the cutting edge and the damper. Uh, really comes into play uh, to be able to again to increase the productivity. But what technically what actually happens during the machining process? Is it the reduction of harmonics? Is that is that what where you get the extra feed rates from? The extra depth of cut? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, and uh, by that we can reduce the vibrations. We can improve the process security and. Uh, of course, then also um, improve the uh, productivity. Okay, so if we take a look at the, the tra traditional cutter, what sort of data are you running at? Uh, we are running at uh, 200 meters. Uh, we have a feed per tooth of 0 0.15. And as you can hear, we are right on the limit where vibration starts to occur. Uh, in this case, we are using a 40 millimeter radial depth of cut and one millimeter axial depth of cut. And just remind me of the standout. Uh, the standout is the length is uh, eight times the diameter and the diameter is uh, 50 millimeter. Uh, the, the cutter diameter is 50 millimeters. So the length of the tool is roughly 400 millimeters. Okay, and when we compare that to the lightweight cutter, what sort of data is that tool running at? Uh, we will run uh, the same data actually when it comes to uh, the cutting speed and, and the feed uh, uh, but we will increase the, the depth of cut to, to 1.5 millimeters instead of uh, 1 millimeter which is equal to a productivity increase of 50 percent. And it doesn't seem to be struggling, does it, the cutter? You know, the, 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 the noise is much better. Yeah, the noise is much better. And remember, we have been increasing the depth of cut with 50% in this case. Mm -hmm. so. And this is all down to the new technology on the front end, the, the shell mill. Yeah, it is. It is. Because we are using the same setup, ex except for the, the cutter body in the front. To conclude, what type of engineering business is going to invest in this type of technology? Quite obviously, it's not for everyone. We need overhangs, but you know, typically, what engineering company? I would say uh, uh, a lot of high-end customers. Uh, we are aiming at the um, aerospace industry, uh, oil and gas industry, but, but of course also general engineering, where we can see a need, as you said, uh, where you need the reachability of the tool and where the lightweight Coromid 390 can really increase the, the productivity at the customer place.